Today we introduce a woman who came to Australia as a very young convict girl. She later became a successful and respected businesswoman and a woman of significant Christian influence and philanthropy. You will have seen her picture many times as it appears on Australia's $20 note. Her name is Mary Riby. Born in 1777 in Lancaster, England, as Mary Haydock, she was raised by her grandmother after her parents died. Her grandmother sent her to be a house servant, but at the young age of 13, she ran away from her employer and was arrested for stealing a horse. At the time, she was dressed as a boy, and it wasn't until after she had been sentenced to transportation that the authorities realised she was a girl. When she was only 15, she was transported to Australia for seven years. She arrived in Sydney in October 1792 and was assigned as a nursemaid in the household of Major Francis Gross, the Lieutenant Governor. On the 7th of September 1794... She married Thomas Riby, a young Irishman, who was a junior officer on the East India Company's storeship Britannia. Thomas was an astute businessman and developed a grain-carrying business on the Hawkesbury River. He then imported general merchandise and traded the Hunter and Hawkesbury rivers with coal, cedar and wheat. He was engaged in sealing in Bass Strait and trade in the Pacific Islands and made trips to India and China in the course of his business. On the death of her husband in 1811 and his partner Edward Wills a month later, Mary Riby was left with seven children and in entire control of numerous business concerns. However, she was a hotel keeper and had already had experience in assisting her husband and managing his interests when he was absent on voyages. Mary Riby gradually rose to respectability and affluence in New South Wales society. She gained the respect of Governor Lachlan Macquarie. She opened a new warehouse in George Street in 1812 and continued to manage her husband's ships. She extended her operations by buying the John Palmer and, in 1817, the Brig Governor Macquarie. In 1816, her property included seven farms on the Hawkesbury and her wealth was said to be about £20,000. By 1820, she held a 1,000 acres or 405 hectares of land half of them being granted to her. In March 1820, she took her daughters Celia and Eliza to England, and in Lancashire, she was received with interest and admiration. Returning the next year to Sydney, her business interests continued to flourish, and she made extensive investments in city property, erecting many elegant buildings. Mary was involved with the formation of the Bank of New South Wales in 1817. This bank is now called Westpac and is one of the largest banking corporations in Australia today. Mary was enterprising and willing to persevere in everything she undertook. Mary was progressive in an era when the role of women was one of limited social interaction. She was widely respected and lauded for her success as a businesswoman. Although Mary was a very successful businesswoman, she took time out for church activities and philanthropic pursuits. She also took a keen interest in education, and in 1825 she was appointed one of the governors of the Free Grammar School. She was heavily involved in the work of the church, and the bishop, William Broughton, 
commended her work in the cause of religion generally and of the Church of England in particular. At the age of 50, Mary began to withdraw from direct management of the business and focus on social issues. She did this until her death in 1855. Two novels have been written about Mary Riby's life. The novel Sarah Dane by Catherine Gaskin, only loosely based on the facts, sold over two million copies. It was also made into a television miniseries in 1982. The novel Mary Riby by Catherine Pullen tells her story more accurately. Westpac, the bank Mary helped set up as the Bank of New South Wales, now offers the Mary Riby Grant. Each year, this grant goes to a not-for-profit organisation that enables opportunities for disadvantaged women. Also named in her honour is the Riby Institute, a not-for-profit research centre which provides insight and exploration of Australians women's leadership issues. Mary Riby was a woman from a disadvantaged background. She became a practicing Christian who achieved a lot in business and contributed a lot to others' welfare in the early days of colonial Australia. Her place on the $20 note and in the affections of Australians is well earned. Christians and men.